So good afternoon, everybody. I think we're live now, and we're going to get started with today's virtual info session. I just want to say hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Josh Valewa, and I'm the Assistant Director for Admissions and Recruitment here at the Brown School. Um, today, you're joining us to talk about your career outcomes uh, for the Brown School. Uh, in my role, we receive a lot of questions around, from prospective students uh, about what our gradu graduates are actually doing. And they ask, you know, where are our graduates going? Um, you know, where do they live? What are they doing? What sorts of careers do MSW and MPH students um, from the Brown School have? And how does the Brown School prepare you to take on those careers? So we've invited a few members of our community to move forward with this conversation and to share with you kind of their insights on all of those great questions and more. Um, we have a, a wonderful resource in career services that's dedicated to the Brown School. And so we're going to go into some introductions and I'd like to hand it over to our partner, uh, Lee. Yeah, so my name is Lee Collicker. I'm the Director of Career Services. And I guess if I could just kind of convey two ideas of, of what we really stand for is that we really try to teach our students um, career development skills that will last them a lifetime. We want our students to feel confident, comfortable in the market, that they can really plan on a career and be able to reach their goals and their expectations. I think the second one would be that uh, career services is a lifetime service. So uh, even if you graduate from the Brown School, career services is still accessible and, and and we are here to advise, to, to meet with you, and to, I mean, you are able to attend all of our different programming workshops and career week, and so this is a service that you have at your, you know, to, to access whenever you need it or whenever you want to, to either, you know, receive the programming and receive the different skills that we, we teach or to teach them yourselves and, and to, to come back and, and help students uh, achieve their goals as well. Thank you, Lee. Um, we really appreciate that, and I know we'll get into more depth on some of the services. Um, we also have a couple of our current students, and I'd like to turn it over to you two to introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Molly Dwyer. I'm from St. Louis, and I'm a first year MSW student. I'm studying social and economic development on the domestic side, and I'm a student ambassador in the Office of Admissions and Recruitment. Hi, I'm Danny Lee. I'm also an MSW student with advanced standing status. I'm from Champaign, Illinois. Uh, my concentration is also domestic SED or domestic social and economic development with a specialization in policy. Great, thank you as well. So we're going to get started with a little bit of a, a PowerPoint. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that. I think this is the right one here. Excellent. So uh, we started off the year uh, with a campaign that's called Know Your Value, and it's one of the campaigns um, that our director here, Lee, as well as our assistant director, Nicole, and our career services um, has worked on. Um, they've worked with students from the beginning of their first week of camp on campus with this premise. Um, and so, Lee, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, so essentially what the Know Your Value campaign stemmed from is that your skills, the skills that you'll be developing as a social work student and as a public health practitioner, they are so valuable that they can fit in a variety of different industries and and at different sectors. And so one of the things that we really wanted to uh, convey to our students is that uh, for them to understand that value and how that is relatable to the market, um, what skills are, are viewed as uh, you know, being opportunistic and prime and, 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 and different skills that they are, you know, industries are looking to incorporate into the, the job market. And so uh, we really want our students to understand um, the value that they have, the different skills that they are developing while they're in school, while they, while, while they conduct their practica, and how that will translate to their overall career, career, and then how to articulate that, whether it's in an interview, whether it's a student that wants to go into a traditional space, or that wants to go in a non-traditional space, being able to translate those skill sets into the, the different languages of the sectors. And so, you know, that's, that's what essentially started it out. Uh, we, we have stickers, we have uh, you know, a lot of different swag and, and uh, things that we disseminated out to, to really help students understand that value. And that's essentially um, kind of the ethos of, of what we convey in career services. And our students we know are highly skilled, highly intelligent, and they, we know that they can do anything. So we want them to understand that and to feel confident in those skills that they're learning in school. Thank you, Lee. And I think this quote here that I'm going to go ahead and read for all of our audience members so that they can um, it could be accessible. Uh, the career, career services was an essential part of my professional growth and played an integral role in my job search. From revising my resume and attending inf informational sessions to applying and interviewing for jobs to negotiating my final job offer 
they were behind me every step of the way. And that's Crystal Isaka. Uh, she was a, uh, who's a MSW and PH class of 16 uh, dual degree student here. And so, Lee, you know, I want to kind of get into a, a couple of specific ways in which um, we uh, advise here. And one of the, uh, the areas that we'd like for you to discuss is programming. Sure. So we offer an extensive uh, programming um, options that, that, that are here at Career Services. And so um, we want our students to feel prepared, as prepared as they can. And so we, we believe in touch points. We believe in offering a variety of different workshops and seminars. We believe in offering uh, a myriad of different types of advising sessions. And so all those different things are, are designed to get students prepared through touch points. And so some of the programming that we offer, one of the, the most innovative ideas that we've had is creating career communities. A career community is a group of students, faculty, staff, uh, alumni, industry professionals that come together to discuss um, career paths and, and different uh, careers in different industries. Uh, so, for example, we have students here from social and economic development. We have a career community that's focused on social and economic de uh, development domestically as well as internationally. And so in those two career communities, we talk about some of the skills that they will need to identify and master while they're in school, as well as maybe some key components uh, uh, to, to, to develop uh, when they're first out of the career, maybe some tips of the trade, we bring in employers, we bring in different alumni to talk and, and discuss things that they, you know, that they know now, but that they wish they would have known then. And so we really try to convey that information and, uh, you know, bring those, those alumni and those employers in to talk about different careers in those fields. And so we call those career conversations. We have a variety of different trainings and workshops, uh, starting just basic resume writing and salary negotiations. We have a career week every year that goes into more in depth into, um, information that is industry specific and even just uh, overall navigating uh, the, the professional world. For example, we have uh, your first job, surviving organizational politics. So being able to understand how to navigate politics in an organization, being able to manage up, being able to uh, you know, really create impact when you're in, in, when you're in your job, uh, how to manage your career through self-advocacy and networking, tips to prepare for licensure, the power of informational interviews, Overcoming that six month loss, the transition from graduate school to finding your first job. We know that graduate students, uh, it's, it's sometimes hard um, to, to go through all that intellectual stimulation and then just stop and being able to maintain your development, but also, um, you know, start creating impact in your community. And gender is issues in careers and social sciences, uh, anti oppression, reflection of human rights in, in your career. So we have a variety of different training and workshop opportunities. We really try to create environments where they are intimate, uh, where students have feel comfortable and confident. So we we have roughly a hundred workshops per uh, uh, per year, and so um, there are a variety of different ways. We know that students are busy. We know that students have uh, really busy schedules, and that they have projects and papers. And we want to make sure that that these workshops are convenient to the, uh, for them. We have uh, walk-in hours where they can work on different skills. Uh, we bring our employers in. We have traditional employer career fairs where we have you know, employers on campus. They bring tables and they're able to meet with students. We also have micro fairs where we bring in one or two employees based on our different concentrations and specializations where the employers don't have to find the right students. The students don't have to find the right employers. They're there. We set up interviews. We have employer showcases where we set up interviews for our employers. Uh, we meet with students. We prepare them. We prep them. And we, we interview on campus and get that preliminary interview over with. And, and you know, we've, we've found great success by doing that. Our employers love to be here. They love to be on campus. They love to see our, what we're doing. They love to meet the students. Um, we do the screening process for them. So it's easy. They just show up, they get lunch, they meet some great students, and our students are, are, are interviewing in a convenient environment. They're, you know, they go to a class and then have a job interview right on campus. And so we do do those different types of workshops and, and seminars on campus. Our advising is also something that we really, we are really working on. Um, we have a variety of different uh, advising options. We have one-on-one, uh, -on -one, we have group advising, uh, we have advising with current students, we have advising with alumni. Uh, like we said, we, we really believe in, in, in promoting touch points. And uh, we, if we have over a thousand advising appointments uh, per calendar year. And so, uh, we want people to come in and we want people to discuss their career paths. We want people 
to be engaged. And it's okay if you don't know exactly what you want to do. That's one of our jobs is helping you figure it out, helping helping you figure out what you're good at, helping figure out what you're passionate about and how to translate your passions into a meaningful career. That's our goal. We want you to attain your, your overall career goal. Great. Okay, thank, thank you Lee, for sharing that information. Um, Molly, my understanding is that you've dedicated quite a bit of time working with the Career Center uh, Career Services this year, and so I'd like you to share with us some of the events you've attended. Sure. Um, so this first semester, I've gone to quite a few Career Services events. Um, I think it's important to know that when I first got to the Brown School, I was not sure of what concentration I wanted, if I wanted a specialization. I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted at that point. So at the very beginning of the semester, I went to social and economic development, global and domestic career communities. I also went to children, youth, and family career communities and mental health, um, just to kind of test them out, see what they were about, um, and sort of figure out where I fit into the social work world. And I think that that was really helpful in determining where I am now, which is social and economic development on a domestic scale. But one of the cool parts about it was um, for the very first one, they kind of started with, this is what um, the current market is now for SED. And they had different job descriptions. And within those job descriptions, it had skills and um, sort of background information about what those jobs entailed. And for me, I remember pairing up with someone within the career community and looking at the different skills that were necessary for different jobs. And then I kind of asked myself, well, which um, organization, which concentration, and then which practicums will get me to learn those skills. And so that's something that the career community really allowed me to do is sort of ask myself those questions, um, which is really helpful, especially if you're unsure of what you might want your concentration to be. So the career communities are a very good way of getting your first foot in the door to sort of ask yourself what you want out of your education at the Brown School. Um, and even at the very end of the session, I remember Lee asked all the students, um, what else do you guys want within these career communities? Um, you know, these communities are for you. Um, for the very first one, we planned it. Um, you know, we had this very good detailed agenda of what we wanted to talk about, but I really want to hear from you guys and make sure that um, within your concentration, you're getting the knowledge and the skills that you want. And so that was really cool for me um, because that whole process of figuring out where I fit in um, was really important. And after the first four sessions I attended, I feel like I had a much better idea. And my second favorite thing is probably the alumni connection events that they were speaking of. Um, and those are really cool because they bring in recent and uh, more further out alumni to come back and sort of talk to us. And I really like to see where the alumni are. I think, you know, as a student investing my time in the program, I love to see um, how successful and how happy these people are within their jobs. And I went to one that was more um, social and economic development focused. And the two um, presenters of that meeting were actually married. They met at the Brown School and then got married right after. And then that, <coughs> and I don't know if that probably doesn't happen for everybody, but I think it's a good story. Um, <laughs> And so they sort of talked about their path to finding their concentration, moving forward with their practicum, and then the job search process. And that was really helpful because they were in fields that I want to be in. Um, one of them worked more directly with policy and one worked in human relations for a bank. And she really did like employee, um, the employee experience. And she did a lot of HR management kind of work, which is where I kind of see myself for now, but that could change. Um, so I think that those events have been really helpful and I, they happen all the time, which is really nice. It's not like it's really heavy at the beginning of the year and then it fades off throughout the semester. Like there's always programming going on. And if you go onto our website and look at the calendar of events, you'll see something at least like three times a week. Like there's always a lot of different things going on, um, whether it be working one on one with career services or engaging with alumni. There is a lot of opportunity, and um, I'm really excited to see what next semester brings, including career week, because I know that's the very first week we get back on campus. So yeah, that's a little summary of the, some of the events that I've attended. That's great. It's great to hear that you're taking advantage of this opportunity here mm -hmm. at the Brown School. Um, and so in addition to programming, you offer regular uh, advising appointments. What are, what are those like? Yeah, just to, so to expand on advising appointments, um, I think there's a lot of our competitors that have career advising uh, as well, but to, to, to have the ability to access 
career services at any time. I mean, we really pride ourselves on trying to respond within 24 hours. Um, we have a simplicity system where you can set up appointments yourself, but we also are open for emails. If you want to email me and set up an appointment, that's something that we offer, and that's something that we try to um, to to make immediate. So we work with our schedules. We I block off schedule in my my calendar to make sure there's room for students that need emergency advising sessions. Um, our advising sessions can be 30 minutes to an hour long. We have students that sometimes need to block off a, an afternoon to really work on a career plan. Um, we, 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 we do the whole gamut of, of advising sessions from working on your resume and cover letter. Uh, we have a variety of different types of resume templates based on different industries. Um, we have a variety of different uh, cover letter templates as well. And so we're willing to, to really make sure that you shine and, and, and you reflect the skills and the education that you're learning uh, as best as possible. We also have salary negotiations, mock interviews, planning your career path preparing for an interview. We have a variety of different things. How to engage with alumni, how to uh, navigate LinkedIn, how to use technology and social media uh, to your advantage as far as uh, being able to articulate your value uh, in those spheres. And so we really try to get our students to come in and to use our services. Um, and we found that, that students that do use our services see a 6% increase in salary. And so that's, that's, that's a pretty big um, <laughs> increase just uh, to attend a few advising sessions. So that's something that we encourage. Um, and it's, it's a great opportunity for students. And, and just the, the ability to, to work that in your schedule, both morning and night, um, is, is an advantage as well. Thank you, Lee. So Danny, uh, can you talk to us about your advising experiences with some of our other members um, in our career services? Yeah, so Lee talked about um, that deeply like personal component to career services. And I've definitely gotten that from um, both Lee and Nicole, but I've mainly met with Nicole, who's the Assistant Director of Career Services. And touching on that personal component, there is that consistency in communication, but beyond that, there's like that personal growth in terms of empowering me in the sense of like, how do I understand my own strengths? Um, because it can be overwhelming if you come into a new community, you're switching different environments. There's just a lot of different change when you decide to go to a graduate program. And sometimes it can feel daunting when such a large city such as St. Louis, but Nicole from the get-go after the first advising meeting was like uh, there to meet me where I was at and then work through that personal process of um, growth and development. So that's been crucial to my uh, time here at the Brown School. And then there's the professional component where um, she immediately after our first meeting gave me a couple of names to meet in the St. Louis community and through emails, um, Carbon Copies was like, okay, this is an amazing student that I believe in, you should meet them. And so every week I've grabbed, grabbed coffee with uh, an innovative leader in the St. Louis community. And her advice has always been after each meeting, find another name to reach out to. And so through that, I've garnered a good network of people that um, have not only produced a awesome practicum opportunity in the spring where I'll be working with a large corporate company, which is a non-traditional social work um, realm, which Lee and Nicole have also been tremendously supportive in um, and just have been really uh, amazing in the sense that I feel so supported and there are a group of people that believe in me and there are now people out in the community who are doing community development work that also believe in me as well. So it's been great both personally and professionally. It's great. Thank you for sharing, Danny. Um, so we often talk about our students pursuing unique and unconventional uh, career paths. And so Lee, if you wouldn't mind, could you speak about uh, what sorts of MS, uh, career paths that MSW and MPH students pursue and how career services is helping these students connect, make those connections in the field? So one of the good things about our program is that we offer so many different options as far as different concentrations <laughs> and specializations. And so our social workers and our public health students can really go wherever they want to go. I mean, they have the skill sets. We have students that will go into direct practice or clinical practice. Uh, we have students that will work on community and community development or housing. Uh, we have students that work, uh, you know, in policy. We have students that go into management. We have students that go into education and consulting. We have students that go into research. We have students that work for nonprofits. We have students that go into for-profit. We have students that work with for government agencies. So we really have the variety of options for MSW students. And that's, you know, one of the great advantages of having so many different uh, concentration specializations is you can really garner skill sets from a variety of different industries. 
MPH is, is, is similar as well. I mean, we see uh, more predominantly our MPH students going into research type uh, positions, whether with a government agency, um, a research institution, uh, higher education. So that's definitely something that uh, we see pretty consistently. Some of the titles that we see are coordinator position, project management positions, uh, just general management positions, assistant associate directors. We have research analysts, we have uh, community development specialists. And so, I mean, there's so many different uh, options and, and, and uh, places to go. Um, and so the sky's the limit for our students. They have so many wonderful skill sets. It's just they have so many different places to go. We, we do see a, a pr predominant amount of students staying in uh, the Midwest. Uh, that's something uh, that, that we see. But I think that we'll talk more about that in a second. So some of the things um, that just, just some of the things that I would want to share, we do a lot of traditional um, placements, but we also do a, a variety of non-traditional placements. So this is some of the percentages of, that we're seeing through our MPH graduates. We have uh, about 20% that will go into university research and then a lot of government and nonprofit work. Uh, we do have students both in social work and public health that will go into the, the for-profit proprietary organizations. And, and to be honest with you, we, we encourage students to, if that's what they want, if that's what they're looking for, to go that route. We know that their skills translate well in all different fields. And so we, we highly encourage that. We have students that go internationally. Uh, we have students that go to the East and West Coast. We have a lot of students that will stay in St. Louis because they develop the connections here and they develop a deep love. But that doesn't mean that we don't have opportunities outside of St. Louis. I, I know that that's sometimes a concern for students that because we're in St. Louis, that's kind of where we uh, maintain all our connections. We have connections everywhere. We meet, we travel, and we incorporate all our different resources to build opportunities for students in, 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 in all places. Um, some of the things that we're doing is, is we're really trying to push non-traditional opportunities, uh, technology, um, different types of financial institutions coming on campus. And so uh, we'll talk more about that in a second, but, but you know, the op options are, are just endless and the career paths are just endless. And, and we always try to bring our alumni in to help kind of forge um, options and, and to create those connections. I think percent of jobs today are found either through a network connection or found through internal promotion. So you have to know someone to, and, and we, we try to really focus on that and, and bring the alumni and the different employers in to make those connections. Excellent. And so it makes sense. Um, if, actually, it looks like we have a question coming in right now. And the question is, can you please talk about global jobs recent graduates have gotten? So, you know, the, the global market is always a very competitive market. Um, we have students that work with government agencies. We've had students that work for major um, international agencies, the World Food Program. We've had students that have gone to Honduras and Central America. Uh, we have students that work in Africa with Maji Safi and, and, and other organizations. We have students that go and work in Europe. And so the, the, the options are there. We, we probably see, I mean, our international SED or social economic development program is a little bit smaller than our domestic social and economic development program. And our global health program is a little bit smaller than our other programs as well. But we see for those students that, that really focus on those concentrations, we see a handful of students going straight toward international. And we also see uh, a lot of those students going to Washington, D.C. and working for government agencies that do work internationally. And so the options are there. Uh, every, you know, that we, we really try to promote uh, different fellowships that, that work abroad, Global Health Corps. Uh, we have different resources for students that want to work internationally. So the options are there. And we do see that every year, students finding meaningful jobs all around the world. Thank you. Um, another uh, conversation that I'd love for you to expand a little bit more on is uh, Mark, uh, our, the connection to both traditional and non-traditional organizations for both MSW and MPH graduates. It sounds like we have students who are redefining the scope of the degree, which is really exciting to me. And so I'm wondering if you would share a little bit about that as well. Sure. So I think a lot of it stems from the Know Your Value campaign. We our students are understanding the value that they can bring to different organizations and how that can create impact within their organization, within their community. And so we have a variety, we have a really stellar reputation within the traditional sphere of, of St. Louis and, and the Midwest and even in the nation, just with the Wash U name. And so we have students that, we have organizations that are contacting us all the time. <coughs> we've 
our goal this year is to have 3,000 jobs posted on our site. And, you know, we're really, you know, we're, last year we had 2,500 roughly. And so we have the opportunities that we're cultivating in traditional spheres. One of the things that we're really trying to push now is non-traditional spheres. And so we've had students go and work for Accenture, which is one of the top consulting firms in the country. CCS Consulting, which is a consulting firm out of Chicago. And usually they're taking MBA students, but we have them now looking for social work students and working and looking for public health students. We have students that have gone to Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, um, Edward Jones, Millipore, which is uh, biotech and, um, you know, creates equipment for biotech. We have students that have interviewed with Bridgespan, which is an offshoot of Bain, the Bain Group in, in Boston. And so but we have a lot of different opportunities and we're really trying to help students understand and build confidence that they can not just, you know, work in those environments, but they can create major impact in, in that sphere. And so we've had Swiss Re, which is one of the top global organizations in the world. Uh, they came to campus for the first time this year to interview social work and public health students. And they're blown away. They wanted to, to hire three out of the six students that interviewed. So 50% chances is a pretty good pretty good scenario. We have uh, tech companies as well uh, coming in. Uh, we're working now, try to, to, to work with NetSuite. Uh, we've tried to approach Google and, and all, you know, a variety of different tech companies to try to get social workers and public health practitioners there. It's the strength in systems thinking. It's their strengths and, and being able to think in syst systematically and then relate to different components, understand what the customer needs, understand what your organization needs, understand what different clients need, understand what the community needs. Being able to have that all-encompassing lens is unique and it's, it's, it's very it's very powerful and, I, and the public health practitioners because social work and public health is housed in the same school they develop those similar um, skill sets and techniques as well and then they have a, a very heavy extensive quantitative uh, ability as well to manage data and analyze data and communicate data and so different organizations whether it's traditional or non-traditional are, are they know about the brown school and they know about uh, our students and the caliber of our students because of know your the know your value campaign and, and the way that we are really working on, on them to understand the skill sets they have, being able to identify those skills like Molly spoke about in different job descriptions, and then being able to translate those skills and articulate those skills to employers and in order to provide them with really meaningful opportunities and potentially higher salaries. It's great. And, and to get you there, uh, the practicum experience we know is a significant part, it's a large part of of getting to your career track. And so not only will you define some skills uh, during your practicum, um, but you'll define how they translate into your actual professional experience. And so um, some of our students actually at the Brown School have been employed by their practicum sites uh, after graduation. So I'm curious if you could talk to us a little more about how career services helps with um, practicum. Sure. So we work with our students from day one. I mean, we're in orientation talking about practicum and job, your career path from day one. We want students to to really, I mean, ideally to really map out their progression as they go through school, to identify where they want to go, where they what they want to achieve, and then map out how they want to get there. And that involves, you know, selecting different practice that will help enable those opportunities and help enable the development of those skill sets. Um, we help prepare resumes, we help prepare with interviews, we help prepare with just general communications on how to, to reach out, how to contact, how to look for skill sets, how to advocate for developing those skill sets in a practical environment, how to um, to negotiate, how to you know to broach the subject of transitioning from practicum to full time employment. We see that as a valuable resource, and ultimately we want to create those pipelines from practicum to placement. And it, it it takes students that are confident and really understand the skills that they can bring to the table and and the, and the value that they can provide to the organization. And so we work really closely with our field education department. Um, we work hand in hand and, and they're part of field education is part of our career communities. And that's one of the reasons that we created this model is so we can bring in field with their expertise and practicum. We can bring in career services and seeing the entire picture. And we work, we can work with the students on the entire process to make sure that they're developing the skills that they're going to need to succeed in their career, as well as developing those, those techniques and, uh, those, that confidence to be able to negotiate to really advocate themselves uh, to create impact and, and to provide them opportunities for their future. Thank you. So I don't know if our, our students would have any more input on kind of career services and practicum. If you have any experience, we'd love for you to share. 
Yeah, so as I mentioned before, Nicole is the reason why I have one of the two practicums that I'm doing next spring, and that's with a company called Equifax, and they are one of the top three in leading industries in rating credit scores and then access to capital. And so, but as a social worker, the question may be like, what would you do with Equifax? And um, my work that I'll be doing is programming pro project management while also sort of leveraging the private sector, which has historically been kind of neglected in the community development world and sort of seeing how do we build relationships with funders and those larger foundations that can provide the funding necessary to do some groundbreaking community development work in different urban and rural contexts. And so um, this, again, is a lot about the non-traditional work that Lee has talked about a lot. And I, I personally believe a lot of social workers do have great skill sets and mindsets that I think should be in these areas that um, <clears throat> have these different available resources, um, whether it be corporate business or politics. And um, I think social workers should be in the political realm as well, since policies affect the client at the individual level. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm super excited about my practicum. And uh, even though I have my practicum secure, Nicole is still connecting me to a bunch of different people for potentially help on future projects, whether it be through Equifax or future jobs. So it's still an active, ongoing, consistent process. And so um, yeah, career services is also uh, has been pivotal in my practicum speech. Great. Yeah. Um, also really excited about the practicum opportunities. Um, one of the things that career services and field ed did, I believe together, was they had a session right before um, practicum fair. And it basically was a list of different skills that you can, you know, achieve out of the MSW degree. And they asked us to circle um, top five things we already have, um, skills that we're pretty confident about, and then five skills that we want to get more experience with. And I remember circling things such as strategic planning, fundraising, uh, different um, macro level skills. And so when going to look at my practicum choices, I really wanted to find something, like find an organization where I could do things such as strategic planning and fundraising. So then when I went into my interviews for um, those practicum positions, I was able to say, these are the five skills I really want to hone in on. <coughs> you know, how can we make this work? Is there opportunity for me to do um, programming, which the original practicum was about? And is there a way for me to also dip in and be a part of making that five-year strategic plan that I know you're about to make? And they're just kind of like, okay, that sounds great. And so that's part of my practicum is I'll be working with children and adults with disabilities. And um, for kids, it will be planning different sports and different singing events and things like that. Um, but then I additionally will help out with their fundraising gala. I'll help out with um, meeting with their board of directors and developing that five and 10 year strategic plan, which are all things that, you know, the second month of school, I determined I wanted to get better um, acquainted and better skills with. So I think that that's one way they prepare you for those conversations with potential employers or practicum sites is asking the right questions and making sure um, it is a mutual selection because you're investing your time in this practicum site and they're also using you and your skills to make sure that they can, you know, advance their organization to the next level. So I think that's one thing I've learned a lot about is how to ask the right questions. So. Ditto to what Danny said, really excited about next semester's practicum, and I'm confident that I am going to get the skill set that I'm looking for. Great. Thank you. So Lee, just to transition towards other services offered by Career Services, um, it sounds like we, we covered salary negotiations, licensure, um, private practice, and so can you, can you speak to how Career Services helps students with those as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, We've been talking a lot about students having a career path in mind, and, and just to just to really kind of throw it out there that we work with all students. Uh, we are excited to help students at all different levels. So whether you have a career path in mind or you're not sure, and you just have you know different goals or ambitions of, of working in different environments or different locations, um, you may not know exactly what you want to do, but you want to do something that's worth your while and, and that's really affecting people. We help you with that as well. You don't have to know exactly what you want to do. And one of the ways that we're doing that is we call we, we created something called the Alumni Academy, which is bringing alumni back in to really contribute to the education and career development of students. And it, it's, it's translating in a lot of different options. Uh, 
the, our entire curriculum almost, or is almost designed uh, around the alumni. So they'll be teaching the sessions. They'll be um, providing the information that's going to that's gonna help students. They're going to reach back and really help students that whether they understand where they want to go in their career path or they don't. Um, having that key connection to alumni that did this, that they went here, they they succeeded, they they've gotten jobs, and, and they're succeeding out in the real world is is just an invaluable asset, and we want to connect those students. And so they are willing to come back. The alumni that we've been working with, the alumni academy, they're willing to come back. They're willing to meet with students. They're willing to counsel with students. They're willing to mentor and network students. And this is you know just a great service that you know is, is very unique. Students typically don't have that accessibility to alumni that readily, and so. That is, is, is one of the great benefits of Smith Brown School. They help with salary negotiations. We do um, speed mock interviewing, speed mock salary negotiations. We have different scenarios that we go through. We do different group scenarios. We do a variety of different workshops focused just on negotiating salaries. Our goal is to um, not just help you find a job, but help you find a competitive salary as well and being able to feel confident and to be able to have that confidence to negotiate for salaries is really important. And not just salary, but think about total compensation, thinking about licensure, thinking about uh, tuition reimbursement, and other benefits that can be negotiated for. Um, how to? What are the steps to get licensed? What are the steps to to start your own private practice? Both Nicole and I have experience and helps experience helping students uh, develop business plans and things like that. So we we have that background and and, and we offer that support. And if you just need someone to <coughs> To talk with or someone to just kind of run through scenarios whether it's your education uh, classes that you're taking uh, practica that you want to you know apply to or jobs or, or just you know things that you're struggling with we're here to support uh, i think that's you know, one of the things that i want to convey the most is that we we have a variety of different options we have a variety of different uh, programming and advising sessions and, and different features and events but ultimately, we're here for you. Uh, we believe that we have a fiduciary responsibility to our students to provide, to provide them with uh, services and training to, to, to really go out there and, and make their mark, and create impact, and create some change in society. And we're committed to that. And so um, we're willing to, to meet with students at all different levels to, to ensure that. Great. It looks like we actually have another question that, that came in. So we'll go ahead and do this one here. How well connected are you at the Brown School with different medical residency programs for students with an MD and want to pursue an MPH first? Which MPH specializations do you recommend to such students? So that, that's, that's a great question. And I mean, we have a lot of connections with different hospitals and uh, opportunities, not necessarily in particular to your residency programs. That's something that if, if you are interested in that, that's something that we could work on. I mean, we have, because our, our program has so many specializations and concentrations, um, social work isn't like a business program. It isn't like an MBA where you have a season for hiring. You don't have a, you know, a, a recruitment season. And so all of our, our, our outcomes are one-offs. And so negotiating with employers uh, takes a lot of time and effort, but we love it. And so we're, we're committed to doing that. So we do have a variety of different connections with hospitals. Um, with different programs, both in St. Louis as well as outside of St. Louis, um, and so we're willing to to look into the resident residency and, and to establish those those opportunities for for you if that's something that you're interested in. And so MPH, uh, one of the biggest um, benefits right now is, is is the hard data, and so having a background in biostatistics or epidemiology um, can really take you far. Um, whether you are a, a doctor or, 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 you know, I mean, a lot of it depends on your career goals. Um, it's, but that's that's a very strong con uh, specialization to be in for public health. Additionally, we have a lot of uh, medical doctors that come back because they would love to uh, work ab abroad. They work internationally and help with uh, some of the calamities that are happening worldwide. And so um, they focus on global health and, and they really try to learn the different techniques and, and uh you know, go for the education that will help them so they when they go abroad as a doctor uh, they'll be able to adapt and, and develop those skill sets so those are probably the two top specializations that i would encourage for medical doctors um, but you know it depends on your overall career goal obviously it sounds like you want to be here and and, uh, and use your medical doctor doctor appropriately and so um, i would encourage you the, the day that you come here to, to meet with us and let's start looking and creating 
can plan for the different residency options that you're <coughs> thinking about that you um, that you have identified as, as some some choices for you, and we'll go out and go out and help you create those networks and help you uh, to establish those those relationships so we can prepare you for that. That's great. Well, I think we're at that time where we're going to wrap up. I just uh, want to thank all of our partners for coming together to to discuss. Um, what we have to offer when it comes to keeping your uh, time at the Brown School with the end in mind and, and what your career is going to look afterwards. I and mean, we're very fortunate here at the Brown School to have such strong partnerships and resources like Lee's department, the career services and what they have to offer, as well as talented students. As you can imagine, our, our school um, we talk a lot about accessibility and we have some, some great folks that would be more than happy to talk to you in the future, even before you arrive to campus. So with that being said, we hope you have a great afternoon. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact our office directly, contact Career Services directly, and we'll be more than happy uh, to spend time with you. I'm going to go ahead and put up some contact information up here, and we will close out with such. Move. Take care.